In this video, guys, we're going to do three ways on how you can stop mold inside your superworm breeding farm or your mealworm breeding farm. So this video has been brought on by the amount of comments that I've recently had on my channel. Because on this channel, we do an awful lot of breed your own live food, whether it be superworms, mealworms, dubia roaches. We do loads. And people are getting mold and they want to know how to stop it. Well, we're going to go through three different ways of doing it because I do them, I've never had mould and that's simply because I do these. So, we're going to go through it. Firstly, I apologise for all of this mess around here. I'm just actually setting up for a much bigger video on how to build leopard gecko hides with natural rock. So, um, that's what all this is. I set it all up and then I've got loads of comments. So, I figured I'd make this video, just why not? But, I mean, if you want to see that, make sure you do hit subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell next to it so that you get notified when I do upload a video. Because that's possibly going to be my next video. It's going to take a lot of editing and a lot of time because I do have to make it all. I've got my glue gun out and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, we're going totally off topic. I always go off topic. How do we stop mould in our superworm and mealworm breeding farms? We're going to start off with number one, ventilation. So, ventilation is massively important. You have to think about why are you getting mould. Mould only comes from moisture or higher humidities and basically nothing there to actually get rid of the mould. Because in stuff like the bioactive enclosures, you have a clean-up crew and they eat, or eat away all the mould and stuff like that. In a superworm farm, you haven't got a clean-up crew that's readily available to eat up mould. You've, you've possibly got a clean-up crew to eat up the dead bugs and stuff like that, but not one for mould. So what do we do? Superworms will actually eat mould if there's not too much there. They're, they're like dustbins, they'll eat anything superworms. Well, that's basically just what I've got here, me super, well, me growing on superworms. So, how do you add ventilation? Well, look at this. I've not got a top on top of this enclosure. There's no top. This is just my growing on superworms. You can't do this for your superworm beetles because they can climb, they can fly out, they can do loads of little bits and bobs. So how do I eradicate that? Well, I have this foam, this net netting stuff. This is basically the net that you get inside a tent liner. And I picked it up for a couple of quid on Amazon. It's linked in the description down below if you want to go through my Amazon store and have a flick around. You, can, you might be able to see something. But I put a piece on top of this and then I fasten it down, secure it down. The way I secure it, I just stick another tub on top of it or I stick a lid on top of it, cut a big hole out the top and secure it down that way. There's loads of ways you can do it, but ventilation is the best way to stop your mould. You can have a good air circulation so that the humidity doesn't rise, the mould doesn't settle into one place. It's the stagnant air along with the high humidity in this scenario that actually causes it. So if you can, keep the lid off totally. If you can't, keep a lid on, but cut a big hole out in the top and net it over. Word of warning, superworm beetles can eat through a thin, flimsy mesh. So you might want to get something a little bit more sturdier. Number two is quite simple. That is the food. Now, you add a moisture content into your container for them to eat, basically for, to rehydrate them. You add that in. I take it away after two days, put something else in. They might have eaten all they want and then that's it, it's done. It's just left there to rot and they don't want it. So take, take it out. You might want to break it apart just to make sure there's no baby worms and stuff still left in it. For me, I chucked a banana in here two days ago and it's gone. So I've got enough superworms in here to warrant that. What, if you've still got some there, get it out, get rid of it, put something fresh in it. It's that rotten food that attracts fruit flies and mold into your substrate. You don't want that. So just get rid of it. You might need to replace that little piece of substrate that might be a little bit damp. Drop something else in, a banana peel or anything. Anything moisture related, you can drop it back in. Number three, is your food, is your moisture content on the substrate? If it's on the substrate and you're getting the mold around the substrate, just get a little flat dish, a piece of plastic, a plastic lid off something and put it on there instead. They will climb up and get it perfectly fine. They won't be able to go from underneath to get it, but they can get it from on top. That might be a contributing factor to you getting mold on your substrate. So just be considerate on where you're actually putting your superworm or your mealworm breed farm. Put it somewhere in the dark corner. My superworm farm is all the way down that back corner there, and this one just sits on top of it. So it's a fairly dark corner, it's dry, there's no moisture going to get there. I don't have any rising damp in the wall that could affect it. It's just out the way. It's heated up ever so slightly, so it's going to be dry. And I have a little dish where I put the food on sometimes. And it just helps me never get mould. 
because it's something I've never had to deal with. If this has helped you in any way, shape or form, make sure you do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new around here, we do an awful lot of live food breeding videos, so make sure you do hit that subscribe button.